joining us. I think we froze up there for a moment. Uh, Dr. Beckman, can you hear me again? There you are. I'm sorry. That was on our end. Computer froze up. I don't know. Did you hear my question just about what do you get from the blue and blueberries? Well, is that an antioxidant? What does it really do for your heart? I did hear your question, and I'm sorry I froze because I had the smartest of answers <laughs> until we got cut off. Okay. Give her another try. So the, uh, the blueberries and other fruits have lots of antioxidants in them. Uh, and a lot of the foods that you eat that we were talking about before that aren't so good for you, like processed foods, they actually cause more oxidative stress or they are oxidants. And this combats some of the processes that cause cholesterol plaques to form in your heart. They're more stabilizing rather than destabilizing to your blood vessels. That's one of the reasons we, we really try and emphasize a variety of fruits and vegetables. Okay, and when you say ox antioxidant, so you don't want oxidants. And the way I look at it is an oxidant is like rust on your veins. And if you have an antioxidant, that keeps it from forming. And buildup of rust, as buildup of rust on your car's muffler is going to be a problem. That is an incredible image that I will now use <laughs> when I'm talking to my patients. For me, it's always been like... The oxidants are the spear, and the antioxidants are the shield ah. protecting your blood vessels. Okay, that's excellent. That's excellent. Well, so you want to eat healthy, and we were talking during the break about how some of us have, you know, higher um, cholesterol, some have higher triglycerides, and, and some people try to avoid those types of things by eating a bunch of fat-free or, you know, different kinds of foods like this, but a lot of those have been processed and are artificial, and I'm kind of of the school of... Look, if I'm going to put something on my toast, I'm going to use real butter, but I'm going to use a limited amount as opposed to using some of this margarine that I've thrown in a pan before and I watch it to make my eggs and it doesn't melt. I got a problem with margarine that doesn't melt. And so is there anything to that? I mean, all right, if I want to have you know, some ice cream, I'm going to have real ice cream, but a limited amount instead of some artificial processed ice cream that doesn't have any cream in it. So one of the nice things about fats is that they do allow you to be to feel more satisfied after you eat something. And I agree with your approach. I think when we when we have processed foods with no fats and only carbohydrates, what they really do is they end up making you even more hungry so you eat more and it's a vicious circle. Yep. I'm not suggesting we should have a ton of butter or ice cream even though we would all like to do that. Uh, but I think that small amounts are certainly participating in helping you feel satisfied after a meal and can extend the time between which you feel like it's necessary to eat. Yeah, it is amazing how you have a, a meal perhaps that's a little bit higher in carbs and fat, and it is satisfying though, and you do not eat as much the rest of the day. So I, I'm not saying that's, a, I think it's a good thing in some ways if that means you're not eating a bunch of crap in between meals. That's certainly true. I'm going to be right up front with you and say I am not a nutrition expert. Yeah. But I think yeah. uh, as a cardiologist, I would I would endorse what you just said. Okay. Limited amounts to make sure you feel satisfied, but trying to avoid some of the saturated fats. There's a variety of different kind of fats which can be beneficial. Things that, for example, are in yogurt would be a good way to go, oh. rather than just say tons and tons of butter. Gotcha. Okay. Now, as far as Cholesterol, we've talked about that and cholesterol buildup, and I'll, I want to get into statins in a moment. Triglycerides, is that, is that more sugar in your system? What, is tri what are triglycerides and how does that damage the heart? Because some people have elevated levels of that. So triglycerides are an, another method of delivering fat around the body, and they're kind of fat. So it's not that they're bad uh, and you need to have some. It's just that when you have a level that's much too high, they can also participate in the process of developing plaques in the heart arteries. And so that's why we're interested in controlling them. It's commonly elevated in people who have diabetes, for example. Okay, so it's just another type of fat there, but it's separate from LDL and HDL. I, I, I get my blood scan, I get my total cholesterol, and then I get a triglyceride count too. So I would say the most the, the medications that we have right now really control LDL the best. We don't really have lots of good medications that help raise the good cholesterol, HDL. And more recently, we have at least one medication that's gone through clinical trials targeted at triglycerides that seems to make a difference. One of the ways that we can really make a difference, however, with our triglycerides 
is by exercising more and reducing the carbohydrates that we have in our diet. So there, you can really do a lot of work up front yourself with just improvements in your activity level and what you're eating. Okay. Getting back to the cholesterol, um, are you a fan of statin drugs? I am. I don't go to their concerts, but I certainly <laughs> collect their records. <laughs> All right. So... <laughs> You like them. There are a broad range of them. I've talked to you in the past about how I've tried different ones. Some have more side effects than others. And you said, yeah, you know, that's the thing you want to do. If you have an issue with one, there's a broad spectrum of statins, which are all a little bit different and may have a different effect. But they're all supposed to lower your cholesterol, right? That's right. And in fact, I would say that they are not just cholesterol lowering drugs, but they're risk lowering drugs. And they've been around now for a good 25 years or more. And I think through my career, this is the number one thing that has reduced heart disease and death in the population for the medications that we use. Not, not as important as making sure that the people have a healthy diet and exercise from birth until their middle age. But this medication, these medications, which have been around for so long and are generic at this point, really are a huge advance in reducing things like heart attack and stroke. Uh, and so, yeah, I use them a lot because the risks, the risks from them are very low and the benefits from them are very high. And I know, you know, you can get higher, higher dosages. I'm curious, in your experience, what is the highest blood cholesterol level you've ever seen in one of your patients? Oh, that's a good question. I've seen people with cholesterol as well over 400. 400, okay. And that, yeah. that would be like if you get cut, it oozes out? There are folks when you take their blood and you look at it in a tube, it's yeah. whitish. Yeah, right. You know, when I go and give blood for my scan, I always look at the vials that are there from other people. And, you know, it's funny. Some are more brilliant blood than others or whatever, and some a little more. That is, you're literally seeing the cholesterol in the blood. Yes, that's not very common, but in people who have terribly high levels, you can see it looks different. Okay, but uh, if you have a 400, you put someone on a statin, that's going to bring it down? It's a start. Some of the people have, uh, uh, you know, inherited abnormalities from their parents. Yes. And they may need other interventions besides just the statin, but the statin is the first thing we do for every one of them. Okay. Let's just talk a, a, a bit about some of the warning signs. I was telling you, I sometimes walk around. There's a history of heart disease on one side of my family. I have higher cholesterol. I try to take care of myself, but I wonder, am I going to be out here playing with the dog and all of a sudden I'm just going to keel over dead? You know, now I don't have any risk factors that I feel tangibly, like tightness in my chest or shortness of breath. What kind of things can people, you know, monitor to make sure their heart health is okay? Especially if you know you have a history, but you feel fine. Well, I think there's a few things. One, I would recommend making sure that you follow up with your primary care doctor to make sure things like your blood pressure and your cholesterol are well controlled. Uh, I would say that if there's a family history, uh, uh, that if you have a family history, there may be some other tests you can do to see if you are at higher risk or have disease early on. Uh, the other thing I'll say is that with regular activity, you will have a bit of a warning if a problem is developing because your ability to do that activity will be will be declining. Uh, there, there will always be some people who unfortunately are struck by lightning and have a large heart attack and they pass away. That happens. Uh, and the only way that we can reduce the chances that that'll happen are by making sure we control the things that we can control. Okay. So and, yeah. you should keep playing with the dogs. I will. I will. You well, you know what I mean? I'm kind of a hypochondriac. So if I start feeling um, issues, I'll act on it. And I, I know people personally in my life who have had what were clear, obvious symptoms. You know, difficulty breathing going upstairs, um, other activities, tightness, and just writing it off as, you know, heartburn or whatever. And, and had friends telling them, go have it checked and they just wouldn't and then suddenly one day the widow maker hits and they're gone and in my opinion it could have completely been prevented um it, it was the what is their body was telling them something and either they didn't want to buy into it they are scared of going to the doctor they didn't have time whatever and they died i mean i know people personally that have had that happen to them yeah i do too and it's i have to say i totally understand the idea 
that you don't want to turn over that rock and see what's underneath there. Yeah. Uh, and we all walk around sort of in denial a little bit of that something serious could be wrong with us. But I, I will say that there are so many things that medicine can do now for heart disease and stroke that it really is, uh, it, it is a huge opportunity to catch something before it becomes life-threatening if you have a new set of symptoms. I would, uh, I would just say that you're worth it and don't try and ride it out. Be careful because we all have family and friends that we wanna be around for years to come and it may be annoying up front, but making sure that you're okay is always worth it. I agree. Now, doctor, could I come to you and pay out of my own pocket and have you do an entire body scan on me and just scan the whole thing looking for any buildup of plaque in my veins anywhere in my body? No, what? I don't do that. Oh, come on. If the price is right, everyone's got a price, doc. How much would I have to pay you? Yeah, you know, I have to say, I don't, um, I'm not that kind of person that does the pan man scan. <laughs> okay, now is that uh, legit? Is that is that something real? I mean, can, and, and I'm sure you're saying if you have no risk factors, why would you want to go to that, that length? But is there such a thing where you can get a scan of your body that looks for that? Or who knows, maybe it'll pick up an aneurysm while they're at it. I mean, can you do that? So we always hear, there are places where you can get that done. I would say do not do that. You are more likely to pick up something that is not important than something that is. Do we, are there times when important things are found? Sure. Do they outnumber the things that aren't important and make us do tests and biopsies and other procedures to make sure that our red herring finding is unimportant? Huh. Yes. It's the, the screening tests really need to be done carefully because if they're not, then you, you are just as likely, if not more likely, to find something that's not a problem, and then you have to go chase it to make sure it's not a problem. And that's not, that's not risk-free either. Right, okay. And I bring that up because I've had other people ask me about it. I'm really glad you said that. that. That makes perfect sense. I suppose only in very special situations, maybe after something's already happened, do they go in and look for something like that. But, I, you know, if, That's there was, right. if there was an easy way, I guess the best way to get peace of mind is, as we wrap things up here is a back, exactly what you've been talking about. Are there, for folks, maybe for whatever reason, that can't get to everything they need in just a normal diet, what would you say are the most important supplements you could take to perhaps help in, in modest doses, whether it's fish oil or, uh, I don't know, niacin or something like that, that you, you feel that might help with heart health? Yeah, I really wish I could give you the magic pill. That would be spectacular. Yeah. But we've tested every single vitamin, for example, A, B, B6, B12, C, D, E, and none of them work. None of them work. I love it. Fish oils have been tested a million times. There's only one really specific one, which is currently now requiring a prescription that has been shown to have a benefit. Uh, and that's really in people that have very high triglycerides. Uh, I don't, I am just not someone who suggests you take supplements. Yep. I just think it makes, it's a waste of money. Yeah. They just don't seem to do very much. Uh, it, don't again, waste. it is so refreshing hearing that from you. I used to be a supplement guy years ago. I come off it. Now, I don't want to take a pill for anything if I can avoid it. And you're absolutely right. The diet, and I'm healthier now than ever. I will say this. Before I eat a piece of country ham, I take an extra cholesterol pill. How about them apples, okay. Doc? <laughs> yeah, because, you know, that one extra pill is what's going to make the difference it's over decades. <laughs> <laughs> is that what it is? Okay, but you're not saying yeah. I can't have my country ham. No, I, no. And in fact, in general, what I try and tell people is there are about 21 meals a week. Make sure that like 18 or 19 of them are pretty good. And then, you know, live your life and have the other two. Yeah, I, I think, listen, as we wrap things up, I always like to ask medical professionals like yourself, who I have so much respect for, what you typically will have for breakfast on a working day. And I'm curious what it is, if you'd be kind enough to share with us. And if it's something special, I'd like the recipe emailed me to me later. What, what did you have for breakfast this morning? A cup of black coffee. <laughs> I knew it. Is that it? <laughs> and is coffee good for your heart? Yeah, I, I mean... 
you know, these studies come out in both directions over time. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to just tell everybody you can have coffee. It's fun. Okay. I like coffee. Listen, I hope you like soup also. Yeah, I do. I love soup. Okay. Well, listen, now we're going to have to let you go now because we have a very special guest coming on next. And it's about Soup Sunday, which is a wonderful fundraiser. We're going to get into all of that. And soup can be heart healthy food also. But, uh, Doctor, it's always good uh, having you on. I appreciate you tolerating my stupid jokes. Are you kidding me? This is like one of my highlights of the year. <laughs> I so enjoy coming out and talking. Oh, you say that. You're so very nice. It's always good seeing you, honestly. And Ed, thanks for coming on and uh, take care of yourself. All right. Keep doing the great things over at Vanderbilt. Thank you. You too. Have All a right. good day. Thank you, sir. Dr. Joshua Beckman, he's terrific. And uh, I really appreciate him coming on. He's just common sense is what he is. We'll take a break. When we come back, let me just say that she's as lovely as she is talented. And her heart is always in the right place. And I'm not talking about my mom. I'm talking about Sue Ford White. Yeah, she's coming on with our kids. And we're going to tell you all about Soup Sunday and why it's something you're definitely going to want to go to. Not this Sunday, but the next Sunday.